Subworld is BJ the Chicago Kid. Jason Derulo. Sean McCorn. Shante Moore. Jacob Lattimore. Seven Streeter. It's your girl, Little Mo. Be sure to check out Concert Daily all the time. Essence of Atlanta, though. So, no, welcome. This is your first festival. You've been here many times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so how, how does it feel to, for Essence to call on you to really bring what you have you've cultivated in Atlanta, which is really a uh, definitive sound, and put it on a mass platform like Essence Festival? Um... I will say late, kind of, but I'm, I'm glad that it's finally happening. Um, I, you know, um, I feel like in order for Essence to continue, you gotta have me a part of it, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm the next bridge after so many other different musics. You know what I mean? It was like um, the same bridge that brought me to this space. I'm that bridge to take these other kids to that next space. So I have to be here. Do you? Does it sometimes get? Does it get challenging for you, or do you lose interest sometimes in still discovering new talent, molding them, grooming them, and creating the next, like giving these hits to the next stars? No, no, no. I mean, I feel like that's something that um, I was, you know, I was put here to do. Um, I wasn't, I didn't do it because somebody else was doing it. Um, I was motivated motivated by other people who were doing it, but I didn't do it because somebody else was doing it. It was just something that I think it was my calling. So um, when I see artists like Anthony Hamilton, um, you know, I see it. I can tell that they should come out, you know, and um, I use him as an example because when I signed Anthony, nobody, I thought it was a joke that he didn't have a record deal. Like I'm like, he this guy don't have a record deal. How is it possible that he sounds like this? He have a record deal. So I feel like these are things that God put in place for me to make happen, and I feel like it's a lot more of that to be seen and done. When you're, it's interesting, right? Like when you're making, when you're making and creating music, and especially at a time where like you like you were just heating up the streets in Atlanta I remember if, even if you read like L.A. Reid's book and he speaks a lot about like him and Babyface having records and they had their way but the, you know then there was J.D. and J. like you were just on it like they were they were coming to you for the hits and pumping out they put Mariah in with you because J.D. They, J.D. created the hits but when you were when you were making and collaborating with these artists were you aware at the time the I think that the footprint you were leaving on music, or were you just really working and doing what you do and doing what you love? Yeah, I never was paying too much attention to what it was that I was doing. I just was doing what I, you know, what I felt. And I also felt, I did feel that it was a different way that I was doing it from like different places. Um, Atlanta is a different type of city. And the things that motivate us to make our music is different than a lot of other places. What do you think sets producers apart? I mean, you're more than just a producer, right? But what do you think sets you apart as a producer? Because you have certain producers that choose to not have attachments to the records that they make, but people love hearing your voice as a setup for a record. They know it's going to be a hit, right? Like, how did how did that become? Was that natural? My idol, Teddy Riley, you about to go on stage right now. I used to hear Teddy saying, yep, yep, uh, these records before. I'm like, I'm going to talk on a record too, just like him. Like, you know, I, you know it's no secret. That's my that's my idol. He's he's the goat to me. Um, I heard him talking, and he didn't talk as much as me. That's what it was. It was just like he said, "Yep, yep." I start talking on the record. Like I'm gonna say it's a little bit more. That way, I have a little bit of difference. But I got that from Teddy. I was like, you know, inspired to do it by him. And TV, because you know you have grown up hip hop in the show, and I mean. Okay. Being a producer, being a writer, being an artist yourself, but now being being an executive producer and working in the TV and film space, what what are the goals there? Like, what do what do you want people to see by being involved in these shows? Like, are you, are you trying to give a platform to artists? What, what's? I mean, I think it's you know, I think it's important that people see. Um, the music business as is, you know, the real part of the music business. Um, that's why I did growing up hip hop. And then plus, I mean, all of my kids, they basically grown up hip hop. And I say all of my kids, I'm talking about Bow Wow, I'm talking about Brat, I'm talking about Escape, I'm talking all of these people, their kids um, grew up under 
hip hop. Um, you know, so it's a thing that I basically know. You know what I'm saying? I grew up, I guess, <laughs> growing up hip hop. I, you know, at starting at 12, that was my whole life of just being on tour with Rent DMC. So it's just like, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. How are you? Now, I, now I ain't got to answer all the questions. I didn't tell y'all he was coming, but he texted me and let me know he was on the way. So I just kept it. You were coming to the stage with like such a vibrant energy, which is, which I really feel like is a expression of like how y how you guys are in real life, right? It's, it's a fun family working relationship that you have with all the artists you've ever worked with in your career. Yeah, yeah. I met Nelly before he came out. Yeah. And Nelly, you know, he came up to me. He was saying crazy stuff like, "I'm gonna be a superstar." I met him in Cancun. He had his shirt off. He was already ready. He was out <laughs> at a spot called Daddy O's. And I was, you know, he 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 just had an energy. And um, if y'all notice, we we never even worked together prior to doing grills. This is the first song we ever did together. But you always seen us. Oh well, what well, about well we did Murph. Yeah, we, yeah, 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 we yeah. did with Murph But the thing about why I love JD Is because even like he said He met me before that And I was nobody And JD took me to the Gentleman's Club He just had a brand new 740i <laughs> be Beamer or something The big body And I didn't even have a deal And he just was messing with my energy And he let me ride with him And I was like damn I'm in the car with Jermaine Dupree I was like, and it was it was just huge. And even though we didn't get a chance to do the deal, because you know business is something different, and you know things happen for a reason. It was just it, I always like remember that moment. You know what I mean? Because I'm a lonely child. I'm an only child as far as my mother's concerned. My my father, it was a Rolling Stone. Question for you, right? And it's you're interesting, and, and very few artists like like when you first came on the scene uh, in, in a way where you know you, where the world knew you, or at least America knew you at first. Right? It it was so it was it was loud, it was raw, it was just like for for black people, most people in this room are black. Like it was, we immediately related, we got it right. As your style has. Not only evolved, but as you've just become the Nelly that we know now, how does it feel to for the music then to only kind of resonate with a certain audience? So now you still making the same kind of music, but having a global audience. And what, what, what was this, the change? Well, I think I think everything um, comes full circle. I think. Um, you know, the same thing you like at 12 is not the same thing you like at 15. What you like at 18 is not what you liked at 15. What you like at 21 and 23 is not what you liked at 18. You know what I mean? And vice versa. And it keeps going like that. You know, a 30-year-old, they ain't got too much in common with 20-year-olds or 21-year-olds. And I think the music comes full circle because as an adult, you understand and learn to appreciate uh, sacrifice, dedication, and things that, that, that ultimately help you capture moments in your life that you remember. And I just think, when the album came out, being that I was from St. Louis and we hadn't had anybody to to, to make their footprints in the sand um, the way that I was fortunate enough to do with the blessings of everybody in my city and people outside of my city, that it just took a, a, a part in people's lives. And, you know, just like anything, when it goes super big and it just makes a U-turn. You have people in Germany, you know, singing country grammar. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. you're like... Yeah, they, they don't care what the lyrics are. It's just like they they felt. STL hats in Switzerland, and they don't watch baseball. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want to say that Nelly, for me, Nelly was the 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 gatekeeper to opening up the door for hip hop in other cities, as far as I'm concerned. Because yeah, Atlanta, you know, was the was one of those type of cities, but St. Louis. Um, I know for me, I would. I never paid no attention to St. Louis until Nelly came out. I don't know about any. I mean, I want to, you know, say nothing to throw anybody off, but I'm just saying, I, I never knew nothing much about St. Louis. Hey, until, I get Tina. I get Tina. <laughs> nah, just uh, see, that's a little too old for me. Nah, I, I got it. I <laughs> but I, you know, like for real. So being in Atlanta when Nelly came out, I learned about the arc. I learned about St. Louis. Like, I went to St. Louis more times than. I done been to a lot of places because of this man. You know what I mean? So he opened the door to a, a lot of things for that that city. I'm, I'll open it up. It's my last question. Like, what define your skill set 
I, now you can't you can't ever define a first that's giving away the secret, but it, it takes a special skill set to be able to work with an artist. And you were ha you had what you were doing in Atlanta. You had a sound. You had a, every people knew like what when JD was behind. And then to meet an artist like Nelly where he was, and but to work with him in a way that he still sounded like himself, but it was it became a collaboration, but it didn't take away from the essence of what he was bringing forth. Like what is that? What does that take? Or what do you think when you're going into the studio in those capacities? Well, I mean, he called me like a about two weeks before that and I think Mariah's record was number one or something like that somebody record was number one he called me he was like you know what you ain't gonna get this you ain't gonna have this run without getting me one of these number one records <laughs> <laughs> that was this is a real call he, he was, saying, he was call, running he was running he called boy. my phone he's like you keep having these number one records I'm coming to Atlanta to get one of these number one records so when he came to Atlanta we was in the studio for hours trying to figure out what it was to find what you're talking about and um, I didn't know what he wanted to talk about. I don't even think we, I, I we didn't know we didn't know what we wanted to talk about. We just we just was trying to find that groove, and you know um, we went through multiple records. But then that boom 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 when that came, yeah, <laughs> he crazy. was ready. <laughs> but but, but, but no, but he got to finish the story because we, he's right. We sat in there for hours, hours pressing, 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 and then we finally said, "Screw it, let's go out." And we went to Magic City. And that's where Grills that's came into play. And we was in Magic City. And something had came on. Something had came on. I don't know. And I ran over to JD because he was up in the cut. I said, yo, I got it. And I started whispering in his ear. And I didn't have the melody all the way. And he said, I already know what to do. I already know what to do. And then we left there. We shot there. And we took the whole club, or half the club, <laughs> back to JD's studio just for the vibe. And as soon as we got in there, and that's when he started playing that boom, 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 boom. And then he had that 808 drop. Boom. I said, oh, I got it. <laughs> and, and that's how it, it was really organically but it was a, it was done to be fun I didn't know it was gonna be a number one record I definitely didn't know that and then for you to transition over to becoming to becoming a Grammy award winning artist right and, and but still also keeping the same essence that we loved about Nelly what was what was that like but you know with working with with Kelly with Kelly Rowland in, right. in the, in the you know what the funny thing is is like I I when I love new challenges and it got to a certain point where my challenge was to see how many how many formats could I grab number ones on and I'm proud and I'm fortunate and I'm yeah I'm bragging a little bit to say that I'm the only artist in history to have a number one rap record Country. have a number one R&B record have a number one rhythmic record a number one top 40 record a number one crossover record and a number one country record wow. yeah. 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 That's, a, you know that. that's very very that's impressive that. and not easy to do like, so no it's not it's not easy to do it hasn't been done <laughs> like because you think of all the great artists that we have and i would never put myself above some of these names i just feel like i'm fortunate enough that i was able to find a lane and carve that out through through music and then with help of, of folks like my big brother here and my other brother pharrell and you know what i'm saying uh and just have people you know want to want to mess with you you know what i mean basically just have people want to create with you that's that's a beautiful thing because that don't come all the time